Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we are going to be talking about Ripple and XRP as well as the vast majority of crypto and finance. Let's just dive in and let's start off with this tweet here. So this is actually from um, an Indian billionaire and bank CEO. He's saying that the US dollar is the biggest financial terrorist. He went on to sound like uh, Xi Jinping. The world is desperately looking for an alternative. These changes happen every hundred years or so. De-dollarization is everywhere. The world is awake and there's no going back. And listen closely to this 40 second long clip. I genuinely feel the biggest financial terrorist in the world is the US dollar. <laughs> All our monies are in Nostro accounts and somebody in the US can say you cannot withdraw it from tomorrow morning and you're stuck yeah that is the power of the reserve currency and i think we are at a very crucial time in the world history where the world is desperately looking for an alternative reserve currency these changes happen once in hundred or hundreds of years the I and did you catch what he mentioned there our money is locked away in nostril accounts where they can cut us off from withdrawing. Hmm. Nostro accounts. Do you remember what the initial point of view around XRP was with, with, with the major use case? It was the $27 trillion locked capital in Nostro Vostro accounts. Now, for years we have seen people say, those accounts don't exist. That money doesn't exist. Well, here you have an Indian billionaire and bank CEO telling you that those accounts do exist, and there is a lot of money locked away in those. In fact, we have broken this down many times in the past as well, talking about the biggest use case around uh, XRP and digital assets. It's the fact that it breaks these, these nations away from utilizing these Nostra Foster accounts. It frees up so much capital. When we also look at that, though, it decentralizes the global economy. This is the number one reason why CBDCs have been discussed quite a bit on uh, you know, this channel as well as around the world. It's because as you look at CBDCs, what it allows is these nations to fully be their own bank, if you will. Instead of relying on the US and the US dollar, they have their own currency that's pegged to whatever they are holding. It could be gold it could be oil it could be anything right but mainly we we've talked about it in terms of uh gold when we look at uh gold backed currencies it looks like cbdc's will be gold backed by um reserves and it will be issued out on dlt but this is why it's so significant because cbdc's allows them to decentralize themselves away from a us dollar now with this we also do see over here from uh martin heisboek Citigroup CEO Jane Fraser said that the U.S. banking system is the envy of the world. But as for banks that failed over the past two months, she concluded that they were, you know, they just weren't uh, well managed. The envy of the world. Very interesting. We do see Citigroup CEO Jane Fraser said the U.S. banking system is the envy of the world. I highly doubt that. But as for banks that failed over the past two months, she concluded that they just weren't well managed. What's crazy to me is that as we look at liquidity, we know it's drying up. The traditional world of finance is ultimately cracking and crumbling, you know, in real time. We've been uh, focused on it for a while now. Um, to me, the U.S. is failing miserably. Not only do we have de-dollarization happening at a rapid pace, we also have inflation brewing. We have the Fed continuing to raise rates. I mean, at this current moment in time, the banks are so constricted that they are essentially being choked off and they have no liquidity. And this is a big issue. But we are at a very, very interesting time. Because as all of this is happening outside of the US, we are seeing a major push towards di digital assets and crypto and CBDCs and things like that. And also messaging is being upgraded. ISO 20022 has been the longest subject that has been discussed within crypto. 
Um, we do see Bank of England uh, BOE to update the CHAPS real-time gross settlement system, RTGS, to ISO 2022 this June, June 2023, uh, known as Transition State 2.1. And this is from Mr. Man XRP over on Twitter. Listen closely to this video. It's about 43 seconds long. Everything cuts over over that single weekend. The Bank of England moves to ISO 2022 for CHAPS real-time gross settlement. Uh, uh, in a move that it calls Transition State 2.1 uh, in June of this year, uh, by which time, of course, we're all going to be experts because we'd have been using ISO 2002 for regular bank to bank payments uh, for a good three months by then. Um, some of you may have detected a certain amount of, uh, of creative cynicism in my tone, and I don't actually mean it to be cynical. Uh, but it is a new language. So yes, um, with ISO 2022, a lot of people have been talking about it for so long, tying it back to XRP, tying it back to this, that, whatever. Um, as we really kind of look at this, Anderson posted this over on Twitter, and this is from Bob Way. Now, Bob Way is a past Ripple employee. Um, and as we look at this, this is him telling us why ISO 2022 migration for cross-border payments is a big deal for Ripple. Read this carefully. Since he's an ex-employee of Ripple, he understands it very well. Notice that it's saying Ripple, not XRP. Just want to make that clear because a lot of people tie this back to XRP. But here we have a few discussions around this. So I'm not sure I could add a lot of insight. I'm sure things have changed a lot. But just for clarity, ISO 2022 is way bigger than you might think at first. It replaces the previous SWIFT standards, MT and MX, and adds a lot of other things. Then over here, the reason this ISO 2022 transition is extremely helpful to Ripple's bank sales team is this means that every bank is required to implement new technology. Banks hate to change an already working process. Change can introduce new problems, which means bankers get fired. And remember that with Ripple's technology, you don't have to change anything. It's an API gateway very similar to what Quant was doing. And then over here, we also do see this is the number one reason most bank migrations don't happen. New system development is expensive and risky. Mistakes can generate bank losses or fines. Bankers get fired. The person you are negotiating with must have product budget, development budget, risk appetite. Uh, with a mandatory 2022 uh, change happening, the person you are negotiating with only needs to have one, product budget money for development has already been allocated elsewhere nobody gets fired for following a mandate that makes the sale a much easier lift for ripple and last but not least that being said bank software sales is still a hard process especially with the sec suits still adding fud to the process but even if banks wait for a settlement their 2022 upgraded system becomes much easier for ripple to integrate with them remember Bank of America, we recently seen a, a spew of FUD over on Twitter around Bank of America. We know that Bank of America is still waiting on the sidelines to utilize on-demand liquidity. They are waiting for that settlement. They are waiting to utilize Ripple. The biggest impact is going to be that even smaller banks are going to be upgraded or upgrading their systems. That creates a much larger pool of on-demand liquidity compatible banks. Smaller banks get the most benefit from on-demand liquidity. It lets them cut the larger correspondent banks out of their flow and cost. And yes, this is extremely large. And as we do look at what's happening around uh, the banking system as well, we recently seen JP Morgan become a much larger antagonist for those regional and smaller banks. The best thing about this is that guess what on-demand liquidity allows these banks to do? Compete with the big guys. Because JP Morgan still doesn't want to utilize Ripple technology. We know that they've been fighting back against Ripple for so long. Jamie Dimon and actually Brad Garlinghouse have had heated discussions many times. Um, but as we do look at JP Morgan, the best case scenario for these smaller banks is for them to compete against the larger banks. That is so big for these smaller and regional banks. I do think that on-demand liquidity gives them a big upper hand against JP Morgan and you know Citi and those big banks. This is very exciting for those smaller banks because again, it means that they will flock to utilize the best technology standards that will allow them to cut out those bigger correspondent banks. Also, as we do look at Ripple and we look at crypto technology, we know that crypto is becoming a big deal. 
What do you see from Ripple? Uh, correspondent, or sorry, corporate uh, treasurers face many challenges when it comes to managing cross-border capital flows, particularly in complex corridors. And uh, as we do look at this guide, so this guide is very interesting. So we do see quick guide, streamline global treasury flows. There's about five pages here. And as you guys do see, they do talk about the global cross-border payments landscape, how it's slow, fragmented, and even ripe for innovation, which we've been discussing for so long on this channel obviously cross border payments a very large market 156 trillion dollars uh they're saying that it could be up to 250 trillion by 2027 which in a decade um i mean that's a massive gain but also in just a few years i think uh it was like 2017 so 2017 to 2027 a whole gain of roughly over 100 trillion dollars in value and with crypto and digitization and streamlining the flows, I do think that that market is going to grow exponentially. I mean, we can go from 250 trillion in 2027 to you know 500 trillion in by 2030. That's how fast um, you know digitization could allow for these markets to grow. But nonetheless, we do see a few things down here. So we do see grow your business with Ripple's payment solution. So a global payment solution. They do talk about. Um, their cutting edge liquidity solution that allows for instant settlement of cross-border payments. And we even do see grow and scale by accessing seven days of interest-free flexible repayment terms for your cross-border treasury flows or payments, simplifying treasury operations with access to liquidity when you need it and payment settlement in real time, leveraging competitive exchange rates and transfer fees, investing uh, save time and resources into other areas of the company, compete in global markets through business expansion. This is very big. And uh, we do see with Ripple, businesses can access Ripple's global payments network and expand into complex corridors like India, Mexico, Brazil, and Southeast Asia. Send payments now, pay later with a post-funding model. Settle global payments in real time. Drive cost savings by obtaining liquidity when you need it. Uh, streamline global treasury flows and free up trapped capital. That last one is the biggest key because that goes back to the initial statement around settlement uh, without Nostrovashro accounts. It's a huge deal. Now, down here, we do see tap into markets with Ripple's global network. This also talks about um, a few things around not only crypto payments, but also how 2022 basically changed the game. We do see that, and despite the fact that it's hard to move funds in and out of those countries, in 2022 alone, India, 100 billion, and Mexico, 60 billion, were two of the top five receivers for inbound remittance flows, with India retaining the number one spot for almost 15 years. Still entering into a complex quarter can be a heavy burden for treasury managers at a business of any size. And this is where we do see Ripple. Ripple will essentially help them do so. When you see 2022 was an unprecedented year for enterprise use of blockchain and crypto enabled payments, despite market turmoil, the end goal for Ripple has always been to help companies and institutions of all sizes move money around the world as seamlessly as information does today. I want you guys to understand what's happening here, because for the longest time, I've told you guys that I have a very large bag of XRP that I just do not plan on selling. And this is the biggest key on why I plan on never selling that bag of XRP. As we look at the evolution of technology and as we do look at these large markets, I mean, these are corporate markets, but also even the banking sector with ISO 2022, this is opening a huge door for a lot of those smaller banks and those regional banks. But all of this is tied back to one thing that is Ripple's products. Obviously, I'm not going to sit here and tell you guys that, hey, we need to rely on Ripple for XRP to gain value. No, we do not need that. I've talked about that many times, but I do think that combined with what we have on the XRP ledger and combined with what Ripple is doing, tapping into other major areas of expansion for XRP and XRP use cases, I do believe that this all ties back to one big network effect. As we look at Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin is a perfect example. Bitcoin has hit over $1 trillion in value off of just we're not even talking about institutional grade adoption or anything like that. Like the, the network effects that Bitcoin has achieved is great for individuals that are just buying and holding it and maybe even selling it on exchanges. But as we do look at XRP and we look at the network effects that could ultimately happen for XRP, it is so much larger than that. This is why I've talked about the market cap of XRP. A lot of people think that, oh, XRP will never hit $1 trillion in market cap, let alone $5 trillion or $10 trillion, right? But the thing is, is that you look at some of these banking giants, you look at the banks, you look at institutions, enterprises, corporates, like even retail, all of this getting tied into XRP is a recipe for incredible growth. And when we look at the last sec uh, page on this um, do document, 
we look at the solution, speed savings and liquidity with Ripple's payment solution. Now notice when you look at this, okay, they do talk about a few things, but they mainly put a spotlight on XRP. But you see, Ripple's global payment solution enables just-in-time treasury operations with real-time global settlement. Transactions close in or close in fractions of a second while dramatically reducing both cost and the need to pre-fund foreign destination accounts. This is that Nostro Vasho account uh, problem. Increased transparency is also a key benefit for corporations and their customers, both for pricing and payment tracking. This enables better upfront visibility and tracing of all costs involved. Ripple's payment solution also offers optimized liquidity for cross-border payments, including complex corridors like Brazil, Mexico, India, and Southeast Asia by virtue of its strong global payments network and ability to use XRP as a neutral bridge for various fiat currency pairs. Ultimately, corporate treasury teams can leverage blockchain and crypto solutions for business to expand into new markets, improve cash uh, flow planning, enhance commercial t uh, terms, and help suppliers factor their receivables. I want you guys to realize that as we really kind of look at this, liquidity is becoming a key player. Ripple solution offers superior liquidity. It's going to be huge. Also reducing the, the pre-funding and all that, like all this ties right back into why this is such a huge innovation. Everybody has been so distracted, so distracted with the SEC lawsuit, so distracted with the Twitter FUD and oh, Ripple selling XRP, this is that, whatever. Everyone's focused on the price today, tomorrow, next week. I look at what is actually happening here. We are seeing an evolution of finance before our eyes and I want everyone to understand just how large of an opportunity this actually is. On every single documentation that I see with Ripple, they always mention XRP. Obviously, listen, XRP is a key part of their business model. I know that we've seen David Schwartz debunk this many times and everybody listens to David Schwartz. I want you guys to realize that a lot of what we are seeing is distractions distracting you away from the whole point of the reason on why you even are in XRP. Outside of Ripple, XRP's use cases are extremely vast. There's well over 100 plus use cases for XRP and it's probably unlimited at this point. Within Ripple's flows though, sourcing crypto and digital asset technologies power and potential will ultimately bring a huge facelift to the evolution of banking, Financial tools and solutions is going to reshape how the retail sector transacts, how fast the retail transactions um, actually settle, how value is moved, created, and settled itself. Like, this is such a huge opportunity. And we are seeing everything pinpoint to the adoption of digital assets. Even the de dollarization move, which is so vast and so important that we've been reporting on it since going all the way back to roughly March of 2022. This is a huge accelerant for a push towards decentralization and a push towards digital asset adoption and streamlining regulations to accept digital assets. I am so bullish, so bullish on crypto, um, not just even this year, but in the long term. And utility, utility tokens should 100% be a focus. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on because I'm a free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter as well as join the free Discord down in the description below. Uh, so it's up to you all. Have a beautiful day or a beautiful night wherever you guys are in this beautiful world. This has been Nick. Peace out, guys.